Hey, what's good, peeps? Wanted to check in with you another week. Uh, we're missing just kind of hanging out with you guys. Um, as I said last week, we normally meet at least uh, two to three times a week um, for anywhere from two to three hours most times. Uh, outside of that, just kind of doing life with you guys and uh, celebrating what God is doing in your life, whether that's uh, in school, whether that's um, personally what you have going on outside of school, uh, extracurricular activities, birthdays, um, just different hallmarks that are coming up in you guys' life. Um, so we are praying that you are being well, that you are still uh, loving the Lord. I do challenge you guys that although there are a lot of challenges on TikTok and um, all the other different apps, um, Instagram, whatever's going on. Um, I know there's a lot of movies on Netflix and things of that nature that you guys are getting caught up on and binge watching. But if we have time to do those challenges and binge watch movies. I know we have time to devote ourselves to the word of God. So I do want to encourage you, not challenge you, but do encourage you to uh, spend some time in the study of the word of God. Uh, meditate on that, not just on Sundays when we gather virtually and Wednesdays when you gather, hopefully with your families, but also spend some personal time in the word of God. Uh, as I shared with you last week, for those who may uh, have tuned in or maybe not, uh, at the beginning of this year, what we shared was that uh, we asked the teenagers and youth to drop in a hat or drop in a bucket, if you will, uh, just some um, anonymous topics that they like to discuss or questions that they had. And uh, again, as I shared last week, we can't really uh, be as thorough as we would like to be in this particular context. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, so I'll give you about seven or eight minutes uh, and answer the question. Uh, the question last week was, what does God want from me? And the way we answered that was that uh, God wants us to love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, our entire being. Um, this week, the question was asked or it was pulled out of the hat. Um, how do I find satisfaction in God? Why, why does God matter so much? How can I be satisfied in him and not just um, complacent, if you will? Again, another good question. I guess the way we'll answer that is that uh, God has placed a desire in all of our hearts. And we know that he's placed a desire in each and every human being's heart that he's created. And that is to search for him. And, you know, one of the things in my life that I that I that I have to look at, that's a constant theme in my life. And that is that um, I'm never fully satisfied. Uh, for example, uh, my wife has been cooking. I mean, every day. I mean, we've been having steaks, we've been having uh, salmon, we've been having pork chops, we've been having ribs, we've been having chicken, we've been having, my God, uh, all this different kind of pasta, I don't know, whatever she cooks, I eat it. Uh, but what's so crazy about it, when I'm, when I'm hungry, not hungry, when I'm hungry, uh, I'm never actually really, really satisfied. Uh, I can eat one plate and I'm going back for a second plate. Uh, I can eat a second plate and I'm going back for a third plate. But then even after I eat that, you know, I clean the dishes, wash the dishes, um, clean the kitchen, that kind of thing. And I'm already thinking about, all right, where's the next snack? I'm thinking about whether or not we went to the grocery store, even if she made a side of mac and cheese or some loaded mashed potatoes or some some uh, some some type of spinach casserole or you know, some 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 cornbread or some yams or some corn on the cob, whatever it is. I'm never truly satisfied. So I'm thinking about the, the grocery list. I'm thinking about, OK, did we go get some popcorn? Did we go get some watermelon? Did we go get some honey buns? Did we go get some cookies? Did we go get some ice cream? Did we go get some some candy? I'm thinking about all of these things. And as I'm as I'm as I'm eating dinner, I'm already thinking about that bowl of cereal that I know I'm going to eat after I eat dinner because I'm never truly satisfied. Not only that, but even when I'm playing with my daughter, we're outside, we're in the house cleaning up, we're doing different things, we're wrestling, we're running around. I'm thinking about water. I'm thirsty. 
And it's not just to really quench my thirst because I could go get a drink of water. But instead of me just getting a drink of water, I get me some Gatorade or I make me some tea or I make me some Kool-Aid because I'm never truly, truly satisfied because we're always longing for something. We're always searching for something. We're never truly satisfied. Our lives are literally, literally just like that. Just like that. Our body constantly needs more food and more water just to survive. So it's hard for us to be to be satisfied. The reason that that is, is because we're looking and longing for something that will allow us to des to take that desiring for something away from us. We're always thirsty. We're always hungry. And it's not just our body, but it's also our soul. This 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 immaterial of our being that will continue to exist after we die. And it's not just that we want food or we're thirsty. The reality of our soul is that everyone is searching for something or someone that's bigger than them. And we know that to be true because look at all the different religions. Look at all the different pursuits of people who will find happiness in what they have or what they do or the achievements that they say that they have. Yo, I got this and I got that and I work so hard to get this and do that to get to this point. But that moment of satisfaction goes away only to leave them dry wanting something else wanting to take away that desire for satisfaction you think about a basketball player or a football player or a baseball player they'll win a championship and the night they win the championship they're already talking about the next championship they're already talking about the next year or you think about a retired athlete or a celebrity or whatever the case may be they retire from their sport they retire from their their profession and they retire, but they're still on the road because now they're managing. Now they're they're on TV being a commentator or being some type of announcer or still doing something in their profession because they're never, ever truly satisfied. Now, that's a biblical reality that I'm talking about. It's found in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter three, verse number 11, where the Bible clearly tells us that God actually deposited eternity into the hearts of human beings. That every human being desires something that is eternal, something that is bigger than us, greater than us, beyond us. But so often that search is kind of filtered, if you will, by the reality of our own sinfulness. And so we will look for temporary pleasures to try to take away that eternal desire for something or someone that's greater than us. That's why people drink alcohol sometimes. That's why people do drugs sometimes. That's why people have ill-advised relationships and have sex and sleep with people that don't mean anything to them because they're trying to satisfy a pleasure that's going to temporarily go away. Now, the Bible also tells us in verse number one through eight of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, that there are different periods of time in every person's life, that there's a time to love, a time to go to war, a time to eat, all kinds of time, a time to weep, a time to rejoice, a time to live, and a time to die. That's the reality that every human being has when they live. And at the end of the day, that eternal craving for something inside of us, we're looking to feel that. And that's when we look at the scriptures to see that God has made us unique to every other form of creation because only to human beings has he deposited that desire for eternity. But it also leaves us unsettled that we're constantly searching and looking. We look in it. We look for it in friendships. We look for it in the music we listen to. We look for it in the movies we look at. We look for it in social media. We look for it in sex sometimes. In drugs sometimes. We look for it in popularity. We look for it in sports. We look for it in clothes. We look for it in possessions. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. We're trying to fill that eternal desire with things that are temporary. And that's a problem that leads us down this chase of life that we're constantly looking and looking and looking. And so many people die still looking for what they could never find. But for us... That know Jesus Christ as Savior, we have found that person that we've been looking for. And it's God. Here's something else I want you to think about. Just because God feels that internal desire and we are finally satisfied knowing that we know the creator and the sustainer of the universe because we have embraced Christ as our Savior. Does that mean that my desire for other things will go away? Absolutely not. Why? Because of this truth. See, we're still finite creatures.
created beings and God has shown us where there is an unlimited supply of eternal satisfaction that we can consistently go back and go back and go back for more and more and more. It's not gluttony because God is the only one who satisfies our thirsty souls. God is the only one who satisfies the hungry soul. And every day when we wake up, our souls needs that connection bad with our God. Just as a cell phone needs a battery to be charged, our souls need to be connected to God. That's why we pray. That's why we read the scriptures. That's why we fellowship with our you group, because every one of us is in need of being satisfied in Jesus Christ. So my question is, what do you find satisfaction? What do you find to feel those temporary desires? And then my challenge is to go be satisfied in God. Be blessed.